Hi, this is Bill Papoon, Managing Partner with Construction Science. And in this training video, I'd like to talk about the activity table. Most of us have a bit of a quandary. We're trying to see the Gantt chart, but at the same time, there's a certain amount of information that we're also hoping to display over in the activity table. So depending on the size of the paper that we're trying to print on, I might need to limit the number of columns I'm showing on the paper or try to shrink them down a bit. Now you'll notice right here that some of these descriptions are fairly long. If we could shorten the description, I could squeeze down these columns for the original duration and the remaining duration. And I also like this because it actually allows me to change the title of any column to a special meaning that I might have for it. So let's go in and look at formatting the columns. As a little bit of background, I'm using version 8.1, as you can see up here. But this works essentially the same in every version of P6. So I'm going to right click with my mouse within the activity table. And you'll see that one of the options is columns. Now these are the columns currently being displayed. So let's say I have another column that I was hoping to show. Well, sometimes I'm looking for information and I don't remember where the data appears. You see all these different categories for things like dates, where we can select additional information. But if you can't remember where this information is as far as a category, here's a nice trick. Click on this down arrow, come in here to group and sort by, rather than category, switch to list. So let's say I'm looking for something like the calendar associated with each activity. Well, this is an alphabetical list. I just go down to the C's, there's calendar, right click, bring it over, hit apply, and now you see it. I'm going to take it off for now just so we can do something else. I'm going to remove it and go back to my original settings, but now I'm going to change the title on some of these columns. So let's go in there and let's look at first the original duration. For those of you who are the old time P3 users like me, you might remember that we could often just show this as OD and remaining duration would be RD. So let's do that. Let's modify this column title. We go to edit column, making sure that we've highlighted the correct column that we want to modify. Now I can come in and give it a new title. So I'm going to call it OD. You'll see that we also have the option to change the width right here, but I'll show you something else that will work a little bit better. We likewise can change the alignment of the data within that column, just like we could in P3. So let's click OK, and let's hit Apply to get a preview of what this looks like. All right, there's the OD. Let's do the same thing with remaining duration. Let's edit that column and just call it RD. Now, admittedly, we have to be a little bit careful that if I'm handing this to someone else and they're not familiar with my abbreviations, I may need to use something that's a little bit longer than just RD. Now, I'll hit Apply, and again, we get another preview. And here's something else to keep in mind, that when you change the title, notice that in parentheses, Primavera is telling you the original data field. So at any time, if you forget what is OD, well, you know just by looking at the parentheses. Although I don't recommend this, you could even come in on something like the start date, and you could call that late start. Essentially, we're trying to fool people into thinking that this is the latest possible start date for this activity. And the reality is, when you look at the printout, you're going to believe that, in fact, it is the late start date. But once more, we'll have this reference to let us know where this data is really coming from. I'm just going to go back and restore this one to start. And let's go ahead and click OK. With these shorter titles, I can now click on these column dividers just like you would in Excel. In other words, when you want to minimize the data to take up as little space as possible, we just double click on the vertical line that separates the columns. And now you can see that the OD did shrink a bit for the original duration. Likewise, we should be able to shrink the original duration. I'm sorry, the remaining duration. 
and you can see that I've gained about a half inch here. Now, sometimes I do have to have a fairly long or wide field for the activity name, but we can quickly find out just how wide it needs to be by, again, clicking on the divider between the columns. Now I've gained almost an inch on my printout. So we can come in here and move this line, and we do have to modify it manually to get it to line up perfectly. And then one other thing to keep in mind, that with any of these columns, this is a quick way of sorting data. If I want to sort all my activities by activity ID, just click on that column. Notice the down arrow, meaning that it's in descending order. If we want to switch the order, you can see that we've just done that. We've switched it so that the largest numbers appear first, and we work down the screen towards the smaller numbers. Now, these sorts work within each category, so you'll notice that when we get into another grouping, that we see the sorting start all over again. But what's nice about this is because I can quickly come in and sort by any column, including something like the duration, if I know that I'm trying to find several activities that have similar descriptions, this is a great way of finding them. I'm looking for activities that involve placing shoulder work. Well, here's several activities to start with the word place. So that helps me. Most of you, if you've played around with the layouts, know that you can also change the sort by right-clicking and coming into Group and Sort. And then there's a separate tab for the sort. Now notice right now it's saying activity name. And if we close this out for a moment, or if I move this out of the way, we can see that, in fact, it is sorting based on the selection I made up here. When I clicked on that column, it's sorting by activity name. Now, if we close this out and I decide to sort it based on the early start date, or what we now call start, if I go back into Group and Sort, you'll see that under Sort, it's changed to Start. Now, some people don't like this. They don't like the fact that when they change by clicking on one of these columns, that it also affects the sort that's part of their layout. And people have also asked me, well, why do we even have this if it's so easy just to click on one of these columns? Well, what if I wanted to sort by some sort of data field that's not currently appearing in my table? In other words, I can sort by something like late start date. Well, normally that would be impossible. Let's just go down here and find late start. Normally that would be impossible unless I add a column to represent late start. But now I can sort the data based off of late start, even though I'm not currently displaying that as a column in my activity table. In our next lesson, we'll be talking about formatting the Gantt chart. And there's several things here I like to do in terms of changing colors and adding certain information such as a notebook topic. I appreciate your joining me here. If you'd like to know more about our training sessions, please contact me either by email or phone. We're based in Northern California, and we'd love to help you with your Primavera P6 problems. Thank you.